Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show you guys a complete tutorial for Open Broadcaster software, trying to begin you from the start of installing the program, all the way to where you can record or stream videos for either YouTube or Twitch TV. So if you don't already know, Open Broadcaster software is a tool for being able to record different video sources straight from your computer, which can include things like your computer screen monitor, the window of a game or a web browser, it can include overlays and if you use programs like Twitch alerts you can also set up you can also set up alerts to pop up on screen while you're playing or streaming a game. Now although most people probably are going to use open broadcaster software for recording video games it's also really good for doing screencasts and there's nothing stopping you from using it for doing vlogs either since it is compatible with webcams or external cameras as long as you can get it hooked up to your PC. So to get started, one of the most basic things you're going to need to set up is a scene. So in the bottom left hand corner of the program, we see our list of scenes. You can see I have a few set up and I can actually go between them. Uh, you'll notice that these other scenes are recording what's on my screen. And yes, if OBS gets caught there, you're going to get that infinite loop. So how you make something actually pop up inside of a scene is that you add sources to your scene. So the scene is the entirety of what you're recording inside of OBS, but the sources are individual components, whether that's an image or a video source or something from your computer that you want to show on screen while you're recording your footage. So if we go over here to the sources area, we can right click or hit the plus sign in order to add a new source. And you can see that there's a whole bunch of options here including display capture when you want to show an entire monitor on screen, game capture for when you want to show a full screen application or a specific game title, image for when you want to show a simple JPEG or PNG image on the screen. It could be good for overlays, particularly if you're going to do PNGs since those can be transparent and let you have the game hide behind the overlay. You can also add in a video capture device. That would be where you would choose a webcam and window capture for miscellaneous windows on your computer so that would be web browsers or you could add an obs window itself or maybe notepad plus plus things like that which aren't games or if they are games you're probably using a window capture specifically because the game capture isn't working so let's create a brand new scene by hitting the add button for scenes we can also do that by right click and then left click on add and we're going to call this complete tutorial scene. So for this complete tutorial scene, let's get started by adding in an image. It's something really simple. So I'm going to add in an image here. So you can see that you can create new or add existing. This is pretty consistent across all the different sources you may want to add in. Because if you have a source in another scene, it's easy to incorporate them into your new scene by just adding the source that exists in another scene. But for right now, we don't have any. So I'm going to just call this a new image test image. And you can locate an image file from your computer. So for me, I'm just going to go over to this list of logos I have. And let's choose the OBS logo. So when we pop that in, you'll see that it shows the bounds of that image with the red lines. We can left click on any of these bounds and stretch it if we wish. And if you hold shift down while you're clicking on one of the stretching points, you can actually stretch the X and Y axes uh, without them being in equal ratio. Without that, they will always stretch at the normal ratio for the image. If you hold alt down while you click on one side, you can actually drag one side in if you want to hide part of that image. So when you don't have the entire image showing, it'll turn into a green line representing that you've actually cropped part of that side off and you can crop as many sides as you want individually if for some reason you only want to show a part of your image on screen and of course you can drag it right back out if you want to undo the cropping so with this properties for test image window I'm just going to hit OK and we can just position this wherever we want it so I'm actually going to shrink this image in ratio and just put it in the bottom right hand corner and now we can add in another source. So I'm going to right click, go to add, and let's do a game capture source. So for the source name, I'm going to call it Stardew Valley. And this is intentionally going to throw an error. As we'll see when we hit OK, it'll say that the name's already in use. So I don't actually have another game capture called Stardew Valley. So for the name for this game capture, I'm going to call it Stardew Valley and hit OK. 
So what's going to happen here is it's going to error out because we've already used the name Stardew Valley somewhere else. So even if you don't have a source named Stardew Valley in one of your other scenes, if a scene name itself has the same name, as you can see over here in my scenes list, I have one called Stardew Valley. It's going to conflict, so just something to be aware of. You have to use separate names for everything between your scenes and sources. So I, I could just put a two here, or maybe we call this game capture, underscore game capture, and hit OK. So by default, when you have the properties for a game capture, it's going to show mode capture any full screen application, which probably works for a lot of cases, but you may end up getting the wrong application recording in there if you tend to alt tab between a bunch of applications while you're recording. So what I actually prefer is to click on the mode and go to specific window. And then you can click on this drop down and you can choose from the windows which are currently open on your computer. Now, if you don't see your game and your game is open, you might need to do a window capture instead of a game capture. Worst case, you can use a display capture and capture your entire screen. And as long as the game's full screen, that would work as well. But the reason that Stardew Valley isn't showing up in this list is because I don't actually have the game open. So I'm just going to go ahead and open up my copy of Stardew Valley and then we'll be able to select that window. Okay, so we can see now my Stardew Valley game is full screened and I should be able to go ahead and select it in the properties now. Uh, I might need to redo it because it populates the list here when you first add the source. So I'm going to actually double click, go back into this source and do capture specific window. And now that Stardew Valley is there, we can go ahead and hit okay. Now, if you add your source and you still don't see it showing up on screen, you might need to change the settings inside of the game. So like with any game, you just go into the options menu and you're gonna wanna make sure it's full screen. If full screen doesn't work, you can try making it windowed mode and adding it in as a window capture instead. So I'll try that, Stardew Valley window capture. I think Stardew Valley specifically is just one of those games that doesn't always cooperate so well. So we can do the window capture here for Stardew Valley and that's pretty much fine. You will see here that at the bottom, because the Stardew Valley window is not 100% of the height of my screen and my screen is 180p resolution, that uh, what actually happens is that the ratio of the game is not ideal. So we could stretch that by holding shift down and stretching that down here as one possible fix if you're okay with that. So if for a specific game, uh, the window capture isn't working for you and the game capture isn't working for you, then you can try with display capture. Once again, display capture will capture everything that's happening on screen. So if you open up your game uh, while it's recording, then that's going to be captured. Not ideal for streaming since you may not want to show your desktop while you're doing that, but, but those are essentially your three options. So let's just give one more example here of adding in a video source. If you want to add in a webcam that is hooked up to your computer, has been installed already, all that jazz, then you can right click and go to video capture device. So video capture device here, um, you should see your list of webcams show up. So if you have multiple, you can select from the drop down list and choose whichever webcam you have there. That's just my laptop webcam. And you can do things like configure the resolution. If you see device default here, you can go to custom and you can set up uh, specific details. So like if you want it to be 720p resolution, you can just type that in as the custom resolution. But you could also make it smaller if you want to as well. Note that you don't have to make it low resolution. Uh, another alternative would be to just use the full resolution, but then scale it down. So once again, if we click on the borders of our source, we can make it a lot smaller in one corner and we could bring it back there. Now it's possible to add in filters for both your audio and your video inside of OBS. So imagine that I had a green screen behind me right here. We could right click on our video capture device, go to filters, and then we'd be able to add in an effect filter here. So for instance, if you want to remove a green screen, then I believe what you want here is chroma key. So chroma key allows you to select a color, generally green, from your background and filter that out. So I'm going to try to select the gray of the ceiling. So I'm going to use pick screen color here. Click on that, hit OK. And as you can see, it filtered everything out because gray is not a good color to use for that. So I'll turn down the similarity. Um, let's see the color spill reduction. 
And you could kind of mess around with the setting. The reason why people use green screens, though, is uh, because green is not really something that you would see in a room. It's not a color people wear, and it doesn't really show up on anyone's body. So it's a good color to filter out in the background when you want there to be some image or a game behind you, uh, rather than them just seeing your room. So yeah, anyway, not really going to get into it in too much detail right there, but that would be the general idea of how you do that. And as you can see, there's other effects you can play around with here as well. Uh, color key is basically the same as chroma key. So if you don't have good experiences with chroma key, but you're trying to filter out that background, you could give color key a shot. And for audio vi video filters, we have um, things like a compressor when you want to make the audio levels of your microphone uh, more equal. A gain when you want to raise the volume of your microphone. Noise gate if you want the microphone to lock itself when you're not talking. Uh, noise suppression when you want to remove some background noise and you can also add in VST audio plugins uh, such as Reaper filters if you look into that later. And FYI, if you have a bunch of sources in your scene but you don't want to actually show them all on screen at the same time, you can always click one of these eyeballs here and that will hide it if the eyeball is not open. You can also lock the sources so you can't make any changes to it by clicking on the lock. So let's say that you wanted to add in noise suppression as an audio filter on your microphone. Well, where we see mic aux here, we can, we can left click on the settings gear and go to filters. Um, well, from there, you can already see I have a whole bunch of filters added in here. It's the same process for adding in a video filter as an audio filter. So you would just add in the one you want from over here. You can see that I have uh, Reaper plugins installed on my computer, I'm not currently using that. But if you want to take a look at my current settings, I have the compressor added in with defaults, I believe the noise gate also with defaults, uh, raising and lowering the open and close threshold will control when the microphone uh, shuts off and when it opens up again. And then noise suppression, I usually put that at negative 60 dB to filter out as much background noise as I can. So it can be a good idea to play around with those, particularly if your environment is a little noisy or your microphone levels are a bit inconsistent. Okay, so let's talk about how you can set up a streaming alert system in OBS. So Twitch alerts is a really common way to do that. So I'm going to go over to Twitch alerts. So the link I'm going to want to go to here is streamlabs.com slash dashboard. Okay, so with this site, we're going to want to add a widget to our video stream. So let's start with something really simple and do an alert box. So with the alert box, you can have events show up on screen like when someone donates to your Twitch stream. So you can, of course, customize exactly how it's going to look by going down here and changing your settings around. What we're really adding to OBS is a browser source, which is a URL that's going to contain these settings. So here I have Mordekaiser from League of Legends. And you can have animated GIFs play whenever someone does something like follows or donates. But how you actually connect it to OBS is that you would click over here to show the widget URL. So I'm going to do that and then we're going to copy that over to OBS. So inside of OBS, we want to add in a new source and this is going to be a browser source. So I can call this event alerts. And maybe in parentheses, I put in browser to make it known that it's a browser source. You can see that by default it's linking to obsproject.com but what we actually want to put in here is the URL that we copied over from Streamlabs. So I'm going to paste that in here. So note that you can also customize the width and height here. If you know CSS rules for displaying web content uh, you can add those in here as well but mostly what we just need to do is post in the URL and hit OK. So that's what I'm going to do here. And now we have this browser source. So it doesn't show anything by default because it only triggers when something happens on our Twitch stream. So I'm going to click here. And you can see on the Streamlabs page that there are these test buttons. So if we click one of these, uh, we should be able to see what's going to occur on the stream when those real events happen uh, before we actually launch it. So I'm going to do test follow here. And we can see it launching here. Test follow goes there. I think I have a sound effect associated with that too. You can also do test subscription. Test donation, so on and so forth. This is a test donation for dollar. 
Then when it comes to the rest of the widgets, which you can of course see on the left side of the page here, it's the same idea. You click to show the widget URL, you add it as a browser source, and that should load up inside of your OBS scene that you're going to be recording or streaming from. So let's talk about settings in OBS and how you can set things up in order to stream. So we're going to go to the file menu. Or actually, before we go to the file menu, let's create a new profile. So a profile is going to be a specific loadout of settings that we have over in the file settings menu um, that we can use to record or stream whatever we want with OBS. So if you want one profile where it records in, let's say, 1080p resolution, you might have another profile where it records in 720p resolution, or you might have one that does it in 60 FPS. So if you want to distinguish those, then you can create new profiles here. You can also duplicate old ones if you want it to be exactly the same, but you only want to change one setting. But because I kind of want to go through the settings with you, let's just start a new profile. So this is going to be the uh, complete tutorial profile. Why not? And I'll hit enter there. You can see that it's uh, selected by default. And now we can go over to file settings. So if you ever wanted to change OBS to have a dark or a light theme, here is where you would do that. I pretty much always use the dark theme because it's easier on my eyes. The stream tab is where you can add in your stream key. We'll talk about getting that in a minute. In output, you can have simple video mode output or advanced output. So we can use one here from speedtest.net. That one is pretty solid. So we'll just go here, click on the go button and it's going to connect our computer to a server and see how fast the connection goes. So what really matters here is the upload speed because when you are streaming to a service like Twitch or YouTube, it's obviously gonna be using your internet. So it's gonna be restricted by how fast your internet connection can upload. Now I'm doing this behind a VPN, so at the moment the speeds are gonna be really, really slow. Okay, so in this hypothetical example, I have an upload max bit rate of 7.82 megabits per second. If you check the YouTube documentation for upload and for recommended upload encoding settings, you can get a good idea of where your bit rate should be at for your videos if you want them to look good. Because if you have a very high resolution for your video, but you have a low bit rate, it may start to look choppy. Now, generally, I would also say that you shouldn't set the bit rate to your absolute maximum for your internet, uh, because if you do that and the internet ever dips, you may run into some issues. So it might be more consistent to set it at about 70 or 80% of this value. So instead of setting it at eight megabits per second, I might set it at six. So we can see over here for this recommended bit rate for standard uploads that it will say for 30 FPS, you can see the frame rate up here, and 180p, it recommends having at least eight megabits per second. Uh, we can also see for 720p, five megabits per second is enough. But if you go up to a higher frame rate, like 60 FPS, these numbers jump up about 50%. So 180p at 60 FPS, you'd want a bit rate of 12 megabits per second or so. Now, if I was to put that into OBS and using a VPN connection, which gives me these low numbers, I would probably run into some issues and people would complain that the stream doesn't look good. So if you actually try to stream, um, there'll be a little icon in the bottom right hand corner, which will actually show the stream health. So if a lot of frames are dropping or the bit rate is just too low for it to look good on the other side, the green light that shows up over here may turn yellow or red. So keep an eye on that the first few times you're setting up your stream. So um, let's say hypothetically, I wanted to record at uh, 180p, 30 FPS. So we'll do eight megabits per second. How we convert that into the video bit rate is that we multiply that by a thousand. So eight becomes a thousand. That's how you convert megabits into kilobits. Audio bitrate, uh, I like to set that at 192, doesn't make a huge difference, but you can pretty much figure out if the audio bitrate is 192 and the video bitrate is 8000, then the video is still taking up 40 times more data than the audio. So increasing your audio bitrate to increase the audio quality, if it helps at all, it's not going to take up much extra data. So down here in recording, likely when you're recording, whether or not you're streaming, you're going to want to save to a file. So the default recording format is .flv. 
But generally, I like to change that to either MP4 or .move. MP4 is a more common format. It works with more video editors, so you can't go wrong with MP4. But if you want to record multiple audio streams at the same time, in other words, you want to separate your desktop audio from your microphone audio, then .move is going to be a good format for that. So I've been using .move lately. And of course, you can set a recording path here. Hit apply. You can go into the advanced settings if you want, but it's not really necessary for most people. So one thing I will point out is if you want to set specific audio tracks to go to streaming and to recording. So if you want to record where your output video file has two audio tracks, one for the desktop and one for the microphone, and then your stream is still using the separate audio track one, which combines them. So going back in here, you see audio track one, and then for recording two and three, then we have to wire up the audio devices in the mixer to go to those audio channels. So if I go to advanced audio properties by clicking on the settings icon for either desktop audio or the microphone, you can see how I have it set up. So in order to make sure that the stream receives both the desktop audio and the microphone, the desktop audio and the microphone are both outputting to tracks one here. By default, all six of these tracks will be checked. So if you want one of them to be left off of a track, you're going to have to uncheck it. So here, desktop audio two is the only audio device that is outputting to track two, which means that in audio track two, it's going to only be the desktop audio. And then for the microphone slash auxiliary, my microphone basically, it is outputting to tracks three and one. So I use one as my streaming track, three as my microphone track for the recorded video file, and two as the desktop audio for the recorded video file. So if you have these set up here, make sure that you go back in again to the output. Make sure that you have audio track one for streaming or whichever track you're using for streaming. And then for recording, make sure audio tracks two and three are checked. Now, as you can see down here, it says warning certain formats such as FLV do not support multiple tracks per recording. Uh, .move supports multiple tracks, MKV supports multiple tracks, and MP4 also supports multiple tracks. Uh, the problem is MP4, if you cancel the recording before it's done recording, you can lose the entire video file, which is bad for long recordings. And MKV isn't compatible with all video editors, so you might need to reconvert MKV into .mp4. And that's why I use .move, because .move has both of the advantages with none of the drawbacks. It's compatible with most video editors, and it supports multiple audio tracks without losing all the data if the stream of the recording happens to shut off. By the way, if you do want to convert a video file that you've recorded inside of OBS, then you should go up to File, Remux Recordings. You can find your old video file. So here I have a .move and you set a new output. So the output can be any video file that OBS can record in. So if I want to change the video file output type, then I just need to come down here and set it to one of these formats down at the bottom. So if I want to convert this .move into uh, MKV, I just change the extension at the end to .mkv, hit save, and hit remux. So if you do that, it'll convert the video file from .move to .mkv, and we can go in here, play it, and make sure that it is still running properly. Making sure that the bitrate is set to 8000 here. Audio bitrate on all of the tracks, I will make that 192 as well, and hit apply. So let's quickly go through the rest of the settings. Audio. If you want to select a microphone source here, you would do that for mic auxiliary device. So here I can select my webcam mic or my headset mic. I will keep it on the headset. Uh, you can also enable a desktop audio device. So generally, this will be like your real tech high definition audio if that's the drivers that your computer uses, which a lot of computers seem to. Um, so if you want it to record the desktop audio, you would make sure that's selected there. If not, you can leave it as disabled. You can change the audio channels from stereo to 7.1 surround sound if you need to. And uh, moving on to the video tab. So by default, whenever you have a new profile, it's going to take 180p and scale that down to 720p. But if you want your final output to be the equal resolution of your computer monitor, then you're going to want to make the output resolution the same as your base resolution. So here I'm going to make it 
1080p by setting that. Uh, you can also change your FPS value to 60 or 48 or whatever if you want here. But remember, the more FPS you are recording in, the higher your streaming bitrate needs to be. Likewise, that also applies to recording to a video file. Because if you're recording to a file, it still needs to look good. You gotta give it enough bitrate so that it will look good in the output. But here I'll set it as 30 since that's what we're going with. Uh, there's hotkeys here. So sometimes I like to set hotkeys for starting and stopping recording. You can do something like Control-Alt-R if you want, and you can make it the same hotkey for both of them. That way you can always start and stop by hitting Control-Alt-R. Just an example, you can also set the same thing up for streaming. Push to talk keys for your microphone may also be a useful option, but I generally prefer to use the noise gates, which I showed you earlier on, as a audio filter to basically automatically have that function. Everything in the advanced tab we can pretty much leave alone, so I'm gonna hit apply and hit okay. So before I show you how to stream, let's show you just how to record to a basic video file. Of course, in the settings, we have the output for recording set to C drive slash users slash Chris slash videos. When we hit start recording, it's going to start recording whatever is in the scene to a video file. So nothing's really happening here. And I'm gonna hit stop recording in order to stop that recording. So now we can go find that video over in my videos. We can open it up with a tool like PLC Media Player, and we can play that back. And of course, with these video clips you record, you can drag those into a video editor of your choice if you need to make a final YouTube video. So next, let's talk about how to actually stream to Twitch. So with your Twitch account logged in, you're gonna want to go to Twitch TV slash dashboard. And then you're gonna to want to click on channel under settings, which will give you your primary stream key. So don't let other people see this or they will be able to stream as you, obviously. So we're just gonna copy this and go paste it into OBS. So where we paste it into OBS is under file settings. And then on the stream tab, we have service server and stream key. So I'm gonna control V to paste that in and hit apply. So now we can hit start streaming to actually take whatever we have recording here in OBS and forward that out to the Twitch server so that whoever wants to watch can watch and interact with you as a streamer. Um, note that starting the stream and starting your recording are separate things. So if you hit start streaming, like I'll do here right now, it's not actually gonna record to a file. It's only gonna record out to Twitch. So you also want to hit start recording. Now, the green light that I was talking about here in the bottom right, if you are running into issues with your stream upload bitrate, then that's going to show up here. Well, you can see the KBs per second that it's actually outputting. Uh, it may be below your max, but if the screen turns to a yellow or red, you may be having issues. Um, so let's go check Twitch really quick. So I will click on the live tab. And we should be able to see my absolutely terrible stream going right here, but I will make it full mode. And we can see zero viewers, but the logo is streaming to Twitch TV, so that's cool, I suppose. Uh, obviously, you want a full scene set up with microphones and all that. So I'm going to stop the stream there. Just remember to check your actual stream on the website before you get too far into recording your video. So next, let's do streaming to YouTube. Some people like to do that, particularly if you're not into gaming. So under the stream tab, we change the service to YouTube. You can see that there's other services too, but um, mostly it's Twitch or YouTube that people use. So it's the same idea here. We just need a different stream key. Now, in order to get our YouTube stream key or to stream to YouTube, we want to go to youtube.com slash live underscore dashboard. And if we scroll down to the bottom of the page here, there's going to be server URL, which we don't really need, that's already included in OBS, and the stream name slash key. So we want to reveal this and copy it. So I have my stream key copied. We go to OBS and paste it in. And you can choose either the primary or the secondary backup server, but primary is gonna be fine unless it's down. So let's do that, hit okay. And let's do a stream to YouTube for a few seconds. So when you start streaming, it should show up here. You should see the green for uh, going live, elapsed time. And once it refreshes, you should see whatever you're recording also show up on the little preview window here. So we can see we've got the OBS logo streaming there. And that's basically the idea. So of course, there's going to be a few more niche settings inside of OBS that you can play around with and learn as you go. But 
for the most part, I've shown you guys how you can record, how you can stream and set up your scenes with sources so that you can record what you want to record or stream online if you need to do that. So hopefully you guys have learned a lot from this tutorial. I hope it wasn't too long. I've been Chris. Thanks for watching and I will see you guys in my future video content.